Why does C.S. Lewis unite magic with applied science? It's an interesting comment in his book, The Abolition of Man, where he says, There is something which unites magic and applied science while separating both from the wisdom of earlier ages. For the wise men of old, the cardinal problem had been how to conform the soul to reality. And the solution had been knowledge, self-discipline, and virtue. For magic and applied science alike, the problem is how to subdue reality to the wishes of men. The solution is a technique, and both in practice of this technique are ready to do things hitherto regarded as disgusting and impious, such as digging up and mutilating the dead. Magic in the ancient world had a lot of, I suppose, functions. In the kind of classical world, magic was often associated with the dead, calling up spirits and controlling them. Hence the idea of maybe going to a grave site. Probably what Lewis is alluding to as well is doing medical experience, uh, experiments on cadavers in the sort of modern era. What's going on here, though, is he's making a contrast between two ways of seeing the world. In the first place, in our world today, whenever we see a problem or an obstacle or an issue, we think, how do we overcome, bypass, and get around it? Does nature cause a problem? Well, let's discover a technique, let's bypass nature, and achieve our desires, wishes, and passions. Now, in many in many ways, this is good. So, for example, if we need water or if we need safety, you might say a better way to put this, we might use a technique of damming water up to provide, let's say, a, a more measured water flow into a valley. So it's not to say that all technique or uh, solving any problem that nature creates is, a pro is an issue. But what Lewis is actually getting at is when you look at the way reality is, the way that things are, the way that you are, you, instead of saying, how can I conform myself to the way things are, gain wisdom in discovering my limits. A limit like, well, there's nat the sun's going down, naturally it's nighttime, I should lay my head down to rest, and you'll wake up when the sun rises. You get, let's say, nine hours of sleep. Whereas today we'd say, I have artificial light and Netflix, let's stay up till 2 a.m., get up at 6 a.m., and consequences, well, I'm not going to think about that because I have overcome the problem. That's the kind of thing that he's getting at. Of course, that's everywhere in life. That's just one kind of mundane example. When we see nature, it's a problem to be solved to satisfy our desires. We don't think there is something that is, that, that is, there's something in nature that teaches us if we strive to know ourselves, if we strive to self-discipline, and if we strive to virtue. But all of us know that the lack of knowledge of the world around us, the lack of self-discipline, and the lack of virtue leads to destruction. It leads to job loss, often sadness, the inability to take care of your family. There are so many problems. But both magic and both applied science today aim to subdue reality subdue the way things are to satisfy our whims, whether that's through lack of sleep, whether that's through working more hours by means of uh, 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 ch chemicals and drugs to get us more energetic and awake to satisfy some productivity goal, which while at the same time damages not only our body, but malnourishes our soul since we have no time, let's say, to reflect or to partake of basic leisure or whatever that is. It seems to be a serious problem in our society that magic has maybe been eclipsed by applied science, both attempted to subdue reality to desires. Science in particular is much more effective we can now contact someone in China through a video call, order something that we need to satisfy our desires and get it within 24 hours, sometimes like four hours, depending on where you live. Life has changed so much that what we call technology today would have 
been called, or maybe would have been viewed as magic, magic centuries ago. It is insane that we can fly. We jump into a machine and fly around the globe. We have uh, digital banking. We have phones that in our pockets hold all knowledge. We have AI systems. We have uh, digital responses to start cars by clicking a button. This is like the kind of telekinetic magic stuff that people dreamed of in the past. And now we have it at our fingertips. But if we live our lives seeking not to conform ourselves to reality, but rather to shape reality to our whims, we will not know our limits. We will not know what reality might teach us about self-discipline and virtue by saying no to our desires. And we might find ourselves in a glut of information, a glut of material products, a glut of satisfying and easy pleasure with a deep deficit in knowledge, virtue, and self-control. And you can choose which future you think is better. But for me, I'm willing to take the embrace of natural limits more seriously, of saying no to myself, denying the pleasures that are so easily attainable through technique. And trying to find that balance where I use technique in order to um, augment or complete a natural good discerned through a knowledge of reality rather than using technique to overcome that which would be good for my soul. What that looks like practically, well, that's where wisdom comes in. That's where life comes in. That's where experience comes in. The particular application that will look different for everyone. But for now, I'm going to stop it here because I'm sure that's enough food for thought. Um, thank you so much. I'll continue to do these uh, short videos on C.S. Lewis and other things that I'm reading in order to answer some of the big questions we have today with classic works or at least works that have deep reflection on the world around us. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.